Chiller Theater one more time with your host, Chili Billy Cardilly. <laughs> Welcome to the castle. I've been waiting for you to come back and see me for a long, long time. I dusted the cobwebs off my Chili Billy tuxedo for a very special anniversary party. It's been 30 years since the horror classic Night of the Living Dead was filmed in and around Pittsburgh. So today, in honor of this monster movie masterpiece, we're going to give you a haunting Halloween treat. A special Chiller Theater showing of the original black and white Night of the Living Dead movie. And if that's giving you chills, pull up the blankets even higher. The man who made monster movie history, Night of the Living Dead director George Romero, will join me here at the castle in just a few minutes. But first, turn out the lights and enjoy a spectacular afternoon. Here's the Night of the Living Dead. Welcome back to the castle. When horror movies are made today, you can usually expect elaborate special effects and multi-million dollar budgets. But big budgets are no guarantee of success. In 1967, when Night of the Living Dead was filmed in and around Pittsburgh, its budget was $114,000. Yet the movie became a horror cult classic and its director, George Romero, went on to become a legend in the monster movie industry. George, happy 30th Night of the Living Dead anniversary, and welcome to our special edition of Chiller Theater. I can't believe it's been 30 years. Boy, <laughs> it's gone fast, hasn't it? It really has gone fast. George, how did you come up with the idea for Night of the Living Dead? And, and how hard was it to get people to invest in a movie about flesh-eating zombies in 1967? Well, horror movies in those days were, you know, drive-in movie fare, neighborhood theaters and so forth. They were not big special effects. Mm -hmm. uh, jobbies. And I was always a horror movie fan. I, mean, I used to watch your chiller theater all the time. Oh, very good. And um, I really looked forward to it every Saturday. And um, I almost stole this idea from Richard Matheson novel called I Am Legend. And then trying to convince people to invest in it was something else. And you, I have to credit with uh, a, a good deal of our success in raising the money because you always supported us, Bill always supported our efforts and really was a big help to us. And the station, Channel 11, yeah. brought the helicopters out and all yeah. that. You can see Channel 11 in there. So yes, we got you can. <laughs> well, did you ever think that the uh, movie would become a classic, George? I, yeah. we, were, we were just, uh, I would have been thrilled if they just showed it, you know, over here at the, at the Irwin Theater or, you know, <laughs> I, I just wanted to see it on a real screen. Uh -huh. And in fact, uh, Carl Hardman, one of the producers, and Marilyn Eastman and I drove out the, the week that it opened. Well, we had the premiere here, but then when it actually oh. opened in real theaters, uh, we went out and, and saw it at a drive-in in Carl's big Lincoln, sat there, had a little <laughs> drink. <laughs> it must have been a tremendous feeling, though, of accomplishment. Huh? Oh, it was a big thrill, yeah. big thrill, just to see something that you did on a, on, in the newspaper, advertised in the newspaper, and actually playing on movie screens. One final question in this setting, and you've made a lot of movies and done a lot of things since then. Did you ever have that same rush after the original, that original rush with Night of the Living Dead? Never quite the same rush. Uh -huh. I yeah. mean, it, you can't equal that. Right. You know, I, we were just young guys. We had a commercial company here. We were doing com sure. commercials, industrial films, and so forth. And we all dreamed of someday making a real theatrical movie. Mm -hmm. uh, never thought we'd make it. And, uh, you know, so th you can't beat that first time. Yeah, that's uh, for sure. Well, uh, we'll be back with George and more movie memories and some classic Chiller Theater moments. So don't go away. You're watching a special edition of Chiller Theater, celebrating the 30th anniversary of the Night of the Living Dead. Director George Romero is with me at the castle. And George, how did you pick the actors to play the roles? Well, the group of us that made the film uh, were all involved in little theater, in commercial production. I came out of uh, Carnegie Mellon, Carnegie Tech at the time, I guess. Right. <laughs> and. Um, we all knew people in the in the theatrical community. Carl and Marilyn were doing radio commercials. Came Carl came out of the old 
Reg Cordick days. Great talent. And um, then um, the other people were friends and uh, just people that were the best actors that we knew from around town. I mean, we, had, we didn't have the money to go to New York or L.A. or look for actors anywhere else, so they were all local people. Which was the most difficult role, did you think, to fill with an actor or an actress? Well, the, the, the lead role of Ben was written with no racial description. Uh, right. I guess the assumption that I made when I was writing the script is that he would be Caucasian. Mm -hmm. And uh, we couldn't really find a guy to play that role. And Dwayne was a friend of, of one of the, the group, and he happened to be black. And so we just said, hey, why not? And so we went along. You know, we just we mm -hmm. couldn't cast it, and we found Dwayne. He was the best actor. And I think that that went on. You know, the film really got its first sort of worldwide success in Europe. And it was right at that time when, you know, there were the riots and the King assassination and so right. forth. And I think that uh, the Europeans saw this as a real statement movie. And, oh. you know, and I think it was just timing. And a lot of it was just the luck of, of, uh, of asking Dwayne to, to do that part. I think all success is luck and ability coming together at the right time. And that apparently happened. How about money? Did you have to offer any of the actors special money? I know you didn't have any. No, we didn't have any money. We we just sort what of. What did you tell them? Let's let's go make a movie. Yeah, huh? let's make a movie. I See mean, what we happens. were paying them. We were paying them minimal uh, money. Not you know it was it was non-union at the time, mm -hmm. and uh, nobody was was a member of any of any union. Nobody in the group mm -hmm. was a member of a union, so we didn't have to worry about union minimum minimums. And we just paid whatever we could we could scrape up and whatever they were willing to to work for. How about your investors? You just scrape any of them? Up? Well, as I say, you were a big <laughs> contributing factor. You used to plug us all the yeah, time on the show. We need money, <laughs> <laughs> and that that helped a lot. Yeah. But uh, there were ten of us in the original core group, and we each kicked in six hundred bucks a piece. That's how we got it started. Wow. Carl and Marilyn had a, an audio studio, so they had their own e recording mm -hmm. equipment, microphone. Right. We had a, a, a film studio, so we had cameras and equipment. And so we were able to do it you know, pretty inexpensively. But once we were able to show film on a screen and people saw that, gee, the, the sound is in sync with the lip movement, this right. is really a movie. <laughs> so we said, well, we told you we could make a movie. <laughs> and then we got a couple of you know, uh, high rollers that came in for you know, a few thousand here, a few thousand there. And eventually, we raised 70. We didn't pay off the rest of the 114 until after we got a deal to distribute the film. Oh, that's another story which we're going to cover later, I'm sure. There's a lot more of today's chiller classic ahead. Don't you dare go away. The zombies are getting closer. And George Romero, how did you zero in on the location of the farmhouse in the movie? How did you figure out, let's do it at this farmhouse? Well, first of all, we needed people that would, were patient. <laughs> and uh, we knew that we were going to, you know, create some, do some damage. And that this farmhouse was uh, scheduled to be torn down. And a real estate agent up in Evan City found it for us. And they said, these people are going to tear this down and plant crops in the, in the fields here. So that farmhouse is gone. Oh, yeah. They had to tear it down because people were making a wreck up there trying to find out where the house was. Where it was, yeah. And the cemetery, too. <laughs> yeah, that's how, you know, I was, I was in there just l last week. They were shooting a special about this for the 30th anniversary, and so we got to walk through that old cemetery again. It was pretty creepy. <laughs> <laughs> movie making in the Pittsburgh area happens a lot today, but how unusual was it to make a movie locally 30 years ago? Well, it was very unusual. I mean, um, you know, in those days, uh, every every major city had film laboratories. There were no videotape. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, there I was know. labs yeah. like WR. Commercials were on film, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and uh, so each local, a big city like Pittsburgh had a film laboratory. Uh, so that made it possible to do. And the fact that we had some equipment of our own from doing commercials and so forth made it possible. Otherwise, it would have been impossible. I remember you rented the movie, uh, the uh, cameras from New York. Right. Long, a, a couple of them. A couple for, of them, yeah. yeah. A couple of extra cameras from New York. That but was we had great. the main camera was ours. A big old thing with a blimp. <laughs> yeah. These cameras, the camera was only about this size, but it would make so much noise that you had to put it in this housing the size of the Goodyear blimp to keep it quiet. George, what was the biggest challenge you had during the making of the Night of the Living Dead? You know, 
just getting it done. I mean, <laughs> it was day to day, really day to day. And little things like transportation and feeding people. And, and some of us just lived in that farmhouse. There was no running water. No. We had to bathe in the brook out back. I mean, so that was pretty rough yeah. when it got into and, and of course, we had to shoot regular jobs in between. So we'd shoot the film for a couple of weeks, go back, do a commercial or two, earn, earn some money to feed the, the crew and the right. actors, and go back up and shoot some more. Oh, uh, hey, there's a lot more, so don't go away. The dead are coming to life. You know, it's a lot safer in the castle, George, than it seems to be at that farmhouse right now. Yeah. Uh, you went on after the success of Neither Living Dead to make two sequels. And how would you compare them to the original? Well, we had more money uh, when we were making Dawn of the Dead, which was the first sequel that, that I made. There were, there were some knockoff uh, sequels uh, mm -hmm. called Re Return of the Living Dead and all kinds of... But uh, you had nothing fun. to do with that. No, I made three. Uh, Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, and Day of the Dead. Dawn mm -hmm. was, um, uh, at the time, the most elaborate thing that we'd ever done. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was huge. Um, you know, I, I, we wouldn't have made it if we shot it at Monroeville Mall. Right. And yeah. we had to work all night. Uh, but aside from that, we had we had so much cooperation, and the mall gave us such production value. I mean, it looked like a you know really looked like a couple of million dollar movie. That's great. And um, do but people it was, still talk about it, George? It's unbelievable. All three Is that of the right? films. All three. Yeah. They're out on video now. They're they're still invited into festivals all around the world. I mean, I've gotten to travel. That's the one benefit that my wife and I have gotten out of this is that we get invited to these festivals all over the world. We're going to take a short break, and, and then it's back to today's Chiller Classic. George, books have been written about this movie, and uh, the Internet is full of Night of the Living Dead trivia. And people want to know even the most minute detail about the movie, right down to what did you use for blood? Uh, <laughs> we tried to use red blood, but since we were shooting in black and white, it didn't matter. It just uh, would photograph black, and sometimes it, you know, it tasted awful. The, the stuff, 3M sells a product called stage blood, mm -hmm. and we tried to use that, but it was dreadful. And since people actually had to have it in their mouths, uh, we, we turned to... Uh, uh, syrup, chocolate syrup, Hershey's syrup, and it photographed just like blood, so oh, it, it made it a little more palatable for the for the actors. I remember asking you on the set, what about the zombies? What did they eat? And when you told me, I could not believe it. Would you tell the audience <laughs> what the zombies <laughs> ate for you? You talk about method acting. So it wasn't those Franks and Beans. <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> now, one of the investors had a meatpacking company, yeah. and he actually brought uh, Cow, uh, cow innards and, yeah. and uh, in, intestines and livers and things. So all those things that you see there that look like they were some uh, prop man really did a terrific job on them. It wasn't a prop man. It was a meat packer that brought that <laughs> stuff in. And some of the zombies really got into it. Well, I they, mean, they, they... I couldn't stop they it. They were hungry. They had, the beans didn't do it for them. No, <laughs> not at all. Well, I don't blame them. We were, I think we were, what did we give you, four beans? And <laughs> that way, <money>, huh? <laughs> no, that was, that was really something to watch how everybody was, but they got into it, and that's why. I Bill, I've made three, uh, made two sequels now, three zombie films. People come out willing to do anything. I don't know what it is. It's the lure of being in a horror movie, wanting uh -huh. to be the grossest one, or wanting <laughs> to be the, the one that dies in the most spectacular way. It's amazing. Well, I'll tell you, we're talking about that, everything that you just said. Uh, I bet you everybody out there is running for popcorn and pizza right now. Oh, boy, hold the anchovies. <laughs> we'll be back with a lot more on Chiller V. Who was that guy? George, you know, that was my first full-length movie. And I want to say thank you very much. How did you ever talk me into doing that? I don't know. <laughs> I didn't believe you would actually come out. I mean, you were a superstar <coughs> to all of us. Oh, that's, that's the yeah. truth. I mean, you know, I, I'm not kidding. I used to watch Chiller faithfully. Guys. You know, George, we were saying earlier that uh, you didn't make any money. And uh, I think it was the Reed Association you yeah. went with? Walter Reed. Walter Reed. And uh, what did you learn from that? They, they set up like a, a corporation, and everybody was making money but you. Well, when the film first went out, it made about $500,000 in the, on this neighborhood theater and drive-in movie circuit. And we thought, wow, it, it cost us 114. We made five. We're in great shape. And we <laughs> thought the movie had gone away. 
And really, it was a couple of years later that it was discovered in France, uh, along with Jerry Lewis. It was Jerry Lewis and I living dead. <laughs> what a parlay, huh? And then it yeah, <coughs> came back. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, he would be a good zombie, I guess. Yeah, I think so. Right, eh? <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, then some critics here, you know, who read the Cahier du Cinema, oh, yeah. uh, decided that uh, maybe they would jump on the bandwagon, and they discovered it and wound up in the Museum of Modern Art. And that prompted a re-release since then, I think it's played somewhere every night. It, uh, it's in the Hall of Fame, though, isn't it? It's right in the Museum of Modern Art. Sure, yeah. with Frankenstein and Dracula. It's unbelievable. Oh, in the Horror Hall of Fame, sure, yeah. Sure. But it, I mean, it's uh, it, it's unbelievable. And and of course, nobody ever got it. None of us. All right. Uh, us guys yeah. here. None of us <laughs> Pittsburgh guys ever got any uh, of of any more money. We never saw another nickel. Of these, course, these others companies. made millions. Well, if you believe the. Uh, some of the trades, which right. I think are under uh, right. estimating, I think uh, you know it's I, as I say, it's it's played worldwide just about ever since. Well, I tell you, it's still very popular, and you know what? I have to tell her the zombies are making their move, and we're going to be back with more today's special Chiller Theater. But I don't know how to tell you this, but if you turn around, the zombies right behind you. I'm Bill Cardell, and I'm talking with George Romero, a famous director from Night of the Living Dead and, and all other movies, too. But, George, you know, uh, whenever you do a zombie movie, you can get thousands of zombies. What is it that attracts, and what kind of person do you attract to be a zombie? Well, it's funny. Whenever word has gone on, well, whenever, the three times that, that I made zombie films, word gets out on the grapevine and we start getting letters and you know everybody wants to be a zombie just like I was saying they were willing to and they're willing to do anything they right. want the most grotesque makeup but the interesting thing about Night of the Living Dead was that the people that were that were coming out to do it were not like these freaks or fans or you know right they were all from the advertising community television community here in town radio announcer everybody was everybody there. was there the broadcasting business. Dave James was a zombie yeah Dave he got he shot, gets well, shot. <laughs> he, he, he came back to life, though. <laughs> but how about George, the uh, sheriff? Uh, now, George Casana, yeah. He was, you know, people ask me about George. I think I asked him a question like, are they easy to kill, sheriff? And he yeah. says... He says, ah, yeah, they're dead. They're all messed yeah, up. Yeah, they're all messed up, you know? And people quote lines to me, and, and I, I, we were ad libbing. Ad-lib, yeah. Yeah, you said, here's the scene, and we start ad-libbing, and, you know, and we start going, and George... George is going to town, and Steve Husko, the camera, he has that camera there and that cigarette. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, when I see that movie, though, uh, Night of the Living Dead, I think of my younger brother, because that was a uh, long time ago, George. Oh, long I see. Years ago. Me too. These you two, too? Yeah. The scene that I'm in there, I was in, uh, I was a reporter in Washington. Yeah, and that was, now you're walking down. That was my younger brother. Tell the folks what happened in Washington. You almost got arrested down there. Yeah, we you? almost, we had no permits or anything. We just pulled into town with our little cameras. <laughs> and uh, Carl uh, used to, Carl Hardman used to collect cars, and he had a couple of big old black Lincolns, and we put American flags on them. And we're in the middle of D.C. I mean, if we did that today, forget it. We'd, we'd be up under Ken Starr's thing, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, they may elect you president nowadays, you know? But that was a wild scene. But, you know, you made uh, very many memorable movies, George, and um, it's been a good association over the years. Um, not only my family, but my daughter and everybody, we speak highly of you. And, and I wish to you and Chris and the family nothing but success. Thank you, Bill. And the same to you guys. I mean, we've been friends oh. uh, since then, and uh, we see our, 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 well, our daughter and, and, My granddaughter, and your yeah, granddaughter Katie. are, are uh, in school together, and so we do get a chance, luckily, to see each other now and again. It's not just uh, professional. George, I love you. You're the best. Same to you, Bill. Thank, Thank you, you very much. George Romero. <laughs>